Today I'll be teaching you how to be an online stalker. Sorry, I mean OSIN, open source intelligence. I know why you're on this video. We're gonna find out about somebody, maybe a boy or a girl that you like, and you wanna get their Instagram ID, their phone number, the email address. Basically, being a creep, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe it's for other things. Maybe it's for hacking. Maybe you're trying to find out who are the IT administrators in an organization and you want to fish them. So whatever the case is, we're using publicly available information to find out about all these details, about all this data. And then after that, you can perhaps even find their username and passwords online. That's how crazy it is. And you want to watch to the end because I'll show you something super cool, a super cool tool that can automate all of this for you. You are so sus. And not just that, what's the purpose? Why do we want to do open source intelligence? Why do we want to search about something like someone, a username, a phone number, and possibly, right, it could be a scammer. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. And the scammer send you an email or they call you up and you're thinking like, hey, is there a way for me to file more about this specific attribute? And from this single attribute, we can build out the entire identity and blueprint of that person, of that, say, scammer, of that possibly an legitimate individual by using publicly available data. So we're looking at things like going to Google search, Facebook, Instagram, social media accounts, and even going deeper. So if you're doing more kind of enterprise open source intelligence search, what we can do here is we can find out, say, for example, who registered the domain, who owns the website, what are all of the email addresses that's available and that we can crawl through on the site? So we're doing all of that very, very quickly, very cleanly. And we can then uncover possibly some other juicy information too. Now, before we go any further, you have to put on your black hat. Sorry, I mean your thinking hat. So then we can go ahead and do some super interesting stuff on the internet. Let's go. All right, so the very first thing you need is a computer. I mean, without a computer, and without an internet connection, how are you even watching this video? That's crazy. So the first place you go to is go to google.com. And what Google does for us is that it is a search engine and it has all these different crawlers. It crawls through the entire internet, getting all this different data, getting all this information. And all we have to do here is to specify more specific on our keywords. So say, for example, I want to look up on this person called Loy Liang Yang. I hit enter on this, right? And you can see right here, we have some data, we have some information. So this is a very handsome hacker. And you can see here, when I scroll down further, we can see a bunch of information like Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, all right, Facebook, and all this different data. So very quickly, we can uncover information about this specific person. And why we want to put a double quote over here, as you can see, is because this means that we want a specific result that matches this keyword here. Okay, if I do not enter with the double code, then what is going to happen here is we are going to see a bunch of other results too. All right, because it's going to separate, say, for example, some of these keywords into something like this. So it gives you similar results, all right, instead of specific results. So that's something that you have to be very careful of. And to teach you even further, what I'm doing here is call Google search operators. All right, so here, if I scroll down further, you can see the following. There are filters that we can use. So for example, all right, the web filter contains text-based links to website, all right, exact filters and the order in which they appear is dynamic, and so on and so forth. So if I scroll down further, you can see the following. We can also specify certain, for example, in this case, a search will work, all right, so we can look out for specific sites, all right, so if you're looking for, say, something on Reddit, you can put site Reddit, or if you're looking something on Pastebin, you can easily do that too. And you can see the following, we can also have a search for a specific site. So we have site like youtube.com, cat videos, all right? And we can exclude words from our searches by using say the minus sign. So here in this case, we can say minus car. So any of the search results that contain the word car will not appear, all right? So this is an example of where we can have exclusion. Next up, what I'm doing over here is to combine a bunch of keywords. All right, so I have gmail.com, I have password, and I have the file type of txt. So we're looking specifically for certain file types. So you can also change this, not just to txt, which is for text file. You can also change it to SQL, which is structured query language. You can change it to DOCX, PDF, PPTX. So you can change the different type of files that you want return as the list of results. All right, so this is amazing. And what are we trying to do here? What we're trying to do here is to figure out, hey, 
could there be sensitive files that we can look out for? And of course, all you have to do is to change this more specifically. So to say michaeljordan at gmail.com. So if you're looking out for someone, you can use this specific email address and a lot of our passwords are already somewhere on the internet. So if you can find out someone's email, you'll be able to enter the following. And then from there, you can figure out, hey, what is your password? And log right in. This is what exactly open source intelligence search can help you accelerate in terms of say, possibly gaining account access. So for example, I found Mr. Hacker Lloyd's YouTube channel and right here under the description, if I scroll down further, you can see the following on view email address. And so when I click onto this, we identify his email address. And all we have to do is just basically copy this email address. And then after that, supply it back into Google search. And from there, we could possibly find his password. That's crazy. And for example, over here, I have another result that has been returned from Google search. And if I scroll down further, you can see the following, right? We have the insert into, all right? In this case, we have like a database table and we have ID, user ID, username and password. So column three is the username and column four is the password. So if I see over here from one of the inserts, we can see that we have the following of this username and a password of 123654. How about another user, JV user, JV1988. All right, so all this is a pretty secure password, I think. <laughs> However, not all the time you get like a password directly. So for example, in this case, if I scroll down further, we can see like we have all these different usernames on the left and all their email addresses on the right. And right in the center is a protected password. All right, so the password ran through some kind of algorithm and we we're unable to get the plain text password, which is a little troublesome for us, but we are no script kitty. All right, we are professional hackers and we have to demonstrate so. So what we can do here is use something called a rainbow table attack. So we use those commonly used passwords and we throw them into commonly used algorithms to protect these passwords and then look it up reversely, all right, and see what we get. So for example, over here, I have password that is being placed into the MD5 hash generator. So MD5 is one of those algorithms that could possibly be in use to better secure these passwords on a backend database. And of course, this is a password I used to. And you'd be saying, hey, why is Mr. Hacker Loy such a renowned professional hacker using password as password? It's because people have the presumption that I would be using some super complex password that is like 100 or 200 characters long, and I could possibly remember it, and it would have a mix of symbols, upper lower cases, and so on. I don't. Reverse psychology. And now I throw in one of those commonly used password, password into this hash generator and I click generate and I have the MD5 hash value over here. Or in other cases, they could be using char one, all right? And typically this is kind of not in use anymore, but that could be, all right, some custom view applications that could be using something as insecure as this. And I can copy the information here and I head back over into that list of credentials. I do a search. And what do we get? All right, we get that this specific user has the password of password. And we have a total of 34 matches, which is pretty crazy because that's a lot of users. And if they use the same password that has been exposed here into their email account, we could possibly log right in. Mm -hmm. And here is another super cool tool I wanna to show you, which is to use this script called MyGrad. All I have to do is enter MyGrad, followed by say Loy Liang Yang, hit enter on this. And what it does for us is that it will search through this specific alias or username into this commonly used social media sites and tell us, give us a report. Hey, does this specific username exist in all these different sites? So you can see, for example, over here, we have things like YouTube user. We have things like TikTok, all right, Telegram, and so on and so forth. And of course, not all of them are me. <laughs> they could be scammers, all right, who are masquerading as me. So you have to be careful about what you find online too, because especially for people who are a little more prominent. So right here is Mr. Hackaloy on Instagram, and this is not me, all right? I know, that's blue verified, all right? There is the 300 over 1,000 followers on Instagram. This is not me, okay? And I have no idea how many people have been scammed, by this person, all right, who is using my photos, videos, and so on, so be careful. So what we can do here is to do a reverse image search, all right, so in situation where you are looking at a specific user and they're looking a little more sus, so what you wanna do here is do a right click, open image, and new tab, okay, and you can copy this link. And then what we do next is we'll go over into google.com, 
and there is a button over here called search by image. So you select onto that, you have two options. The first option, you can drag an image, upload a file directly here, and Google Lens will help to analyze that. The other option over here is to just give it the image link. So I've selected onto the image link and it will allow us to add this to our search. Okay, so once we're done with that, and I've added a visualization to things, all right, let's give it a minute to search. And you can see right here, okay, so we have the image on the top left corner and the person in the image is this specific individual, all right, and if I scroll down further, now we get the link. So if you look at a specific person, could be a scammer and so on, and you want to find out more information about that person, that individual, then all you have to do is just upload your image onto Google search and they'll give you more details of this person. So possibly, all right, their actual Facebook, their legitimate Facebook link, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And then from there, you can start building a profile and identity of that individual. And at the same time, if you get some kind of call and you have no idea who is the caller, all you have to do is to copy the phone number directly over and to search again. And from here, all right, for example, I have a dummy phone number over here. But if you have the actual phone number, which you've received on your phone or your mobile device, you can just copy and paste that into the search and see what you get. And now if you need more tools to help you do more searches, all you have to do is go over into oseenframework.com. So over here, for example, if I want to look out for email address, I can select on the email address, email search. All right, so we have several options here. All right, so we have, for example, like Salvar, Deadstem, Hunter, and so on and so forth. If I want to do people search engines, I can select again, look for registries. So to give you the direct link to all these different tools, sites that you can use to help you advance your searches. Now there's another super cool resource that we can use. And in this situation, if you go over to exploit-db.com, there's something called Google Hacking Database. Go ahead and click on that. You can see right here, these are all the keywords that other authors or users have used and have published it over here that when simply copy and paste into Google search to find some interesting stuff. Like for example, you have the following of files containing passwords, various online devices. So if you want to connect to some online devices, particularly like web cameras, even mobile devices, by the way, vulnerable servers, all right, juicy information. You can easily just simply copy this keywords over here as is and paste them over in Google search and you get a bunch of results. Okay, so say for example, I go over into files containing passwords category. I select onto that and let's see what we got. All right, so we have the following of index of pwd.db, all right? So we can say copy this, okay? And I go over into the search and let's see what we get, okay? So we have like index of slash pwd, all right? Index of pages and so on. And then we have other combinations, all right? Like paste bin, paste bin is going to be pretty interesting too. So I can copy this over here, all right? We have pass.txt, I paste it. And this is looking for results only from pastebean.com. All right, and in the text, we have, for example, pass.txt. Okay, so this is an example of that. Or I can change this up a little bit and possibly enter password and see what we get as well. And we have the following information. Okay, so this is an example of how we can very quickly search for credentials. And then all you have to do is if you're looking for a specific individual and from your earlier searches, you found the person's email address. All you have to do once again is enter the email address of the person. So say for example, Loy Liang Yang at loyliangyang.com. Hit enter on this and see what you get. OSIN is so easy. It's basically online stalking and it's a little too easy. And think about how much more information you can get if you spend hours searching about someone, searching about an enterprise and organization. Let me know what interesting stuff you found.